Welcome to the Militia Gaming community, I'm Trigger, and today we get to do something that I should have done a long time ago, and that's test and drive this R32 Skyline. We're going to be doing the wrong engine series, but in the new format, so I'm going to be testing each engine, and then we're going to be building it for the track, the dirt, drifting, and drag racing. Let's go! I'm giving away an Xbox Series X to one of my subs this holiday season. Click the giveaway video link in the description or in the top right of this video now to watch the video and enter the giveaway. Just being a sub will not automatically put you in the giveaway, you must officially enter. So go watch that video, enter, and then come back to this one. Good luck! Alright, so first up, I like to test all of the engines, and to do that we have to build each one to see which ones are going to be 400 plus and which ones are not. I'm not going to test the ones that are not 400 plus because those engines will not perform at the level that the other ones will. So let's put some ultimate parts on this thing, let's get it built, and let's see which engines we're going to test first. Now for the testing, we're going to stick to our standard track setup and we'll make the adjustments to each individual part as we go through the test. But for right now, we're gonna do track suspension and track tires and track differential. So everything else will be just the highest level it possibly can. And then we won't make any changes until after we finish testing the engines. All right, here's my first build. And this is on the stock engine. I've got all the Ultimate Plus parts, the dual turbo and the five by three pound NOS, along with all of my track parts for the chassis the drivetrain and the auxiliaries and it does not reach 400 plus for the car rating so we're just going to move on to the next engine we'll see if we can't find one that does have a 400 plus rating and then we'll take that out to the track all right here we've got the 350 horsepower v6 still not 400 plus let's keep moving and here's the 345 horsepower v8 fully built 395 still not 400 next engine all right here's the first engine in the lineup that actually puts the car over 400 plus. It's the 456 horsepower V8. We've got it fully built with Ultimate Plus parts. Our track set up on all the chassis, drive chain, and auxiliary. But let's take this out to Arian and see how we do. Now just as my own preference, I like the steering sensitivity all the way down. The downforce will have to adjust as we go. Just depends on how the car reacts, but in general, you want the most downforce you can possibly have without sacrificing too much speed or cornering ability. Sometimes you need the car to slide out, and if you have too much downforce, that can prevent the car from doing what you think it should do in a particular corner. So we're gonna leave it in the middle for now. We'll adjust that later as we go on throughout the tests. Wow, we got a really good launch. Oh my goodness. I like it. That is awesome. That turn was really nice too. I'm actually surprised with this car so far. I've never driven it before, and uh, this feels really, really nice. Hopefully it has enough speed to keep up with the fast cars. So the car feels really good, but it seems like it struggles to get to top speed. Like it just doesn't, it just doesn't get there as fast as it needs to. All right, 301.40 for this engine. It's not really that great of a time. I think some of the other engines will perform better. Let's go ahead and swap it over to the next one and see what we can do. All right, here we go. This is the 591 horsepower V6. And I fucked up the start because I was talking. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is the 591 horsepower V6. Oh, it starts out well. Not too bad. Not as quick off the line as the other one was. But way nicer on that turn, though. Felt better. Here we go, final 500. It's gonna be a three minute time. Oh, just at three minutes. So this one was much faster. It felt a lot faster than the V8 that we tried before. So let's see what the official time is. Three minutes, 0 0.08. So I think with a little bit better driving skill, we can definitely get that under three minutes. Maybe an adjustments to either tires or live tuning to, to help us with that, but I think we can get that one under three minutes. So that was the 591 horsepower V6. That was unexpected. I didn't think that engine was going to be faster, but it is what it is. Let's move on to the next one. All right, here we go. This is the 570 V8. 
Again, really nice start. This car really jumps off the line really well. I just love the sound of this engine. This 570 horsepower engine is really sounds nice. Alright, here we go. Final 500. It's going to be really close. It looks like it might be faster. It is! Oh, it wasn't just a little faster. It was a few seconds faster. I think it was 258. Let's see what the final score, or the final time is. 258.78 for this V8. This thing sounds amazing. I really hope this is the right engine. I hope this is the fastest one, but let's see. We still got a couple more engines to test. Let's go. All right, final stretch. 500 yards remaining. This is gonna be the fastest time yet. Oh yeah, low 250s. That is awesome. That's under 255. It was a 254 something. Let's see what the final time is. But that was great. That was the 4.4. Uh, 4.4 liter V8, 254.81 for that 591 horsepower, 4.4 liter V8. That is the fastest time of the day, and I think that is going to be the fastest engine. That one felt really, really good. That felt really fast. Um, I'm excited about that, but we will throw in that forged inline six. Uh, we'll see how that one goes. That is the final engine we need to test. All right, here we go. Last motor of the day, the forged inline six. Let's go. All right, this engine felt really good also. It feels like a super fast run. Let's see what we end up with. Here we go, final straight, 250. We could get it. This could be the fastest time of the day. Oh, I think it's just a little slower than that V8. I think it's just a little slower than that V8, and that is really consistent with a lot of the cars in this game. The forged engine, which is the one you want to use, is just a tiny bit slower. 255.47 for the forged inline six. The V8 is the winner, and I could feel it towards the end. This engine just didn't have that little bit of oomph at the top end, and it's because it's an inline six instead of that V8. The V8 had a little more power in the top end. There's really not any sense in retesting it. Both of those runs were extremely clean. I didn't make any mistakes. All right, so that 591 horsepower 4.4 liter V8 is the best engine for this car, but I wanted to make some changes to the live tuning and possibly test out a couple of gearboxes to see if we can get a faster time. I do like the race tires. We're gonna stick with those. There's no sense in testing out the track tires. It's a really sticky build anyway, because it's all wheel drive. So I'm sticking with the race tires. So let's make some adjustments and then we'll run this back again with that same 591 horsepower V8 engine and see if we can't improve our time so that we can put this R32 on the leaderboard for Arian. All right, so after testing the gearboxes, I figured out that the seven speed is the best gearbox for the car, but I wanted to change to the sport brakes because I felt like I was over braking a bit in those tests. So I've swapped over to the sport brakes and we're gonna run this again and see if we can't run a faster time using sport brakes. See if it helps us not over brake too much. Let's do it. All right, so running that with the sport brakes did not help much. I'm gonna go ahead and use the elite brakes. We're gonna swap it back, but let's go ahead and head back to the garage so we can get the full build for this in a track setting. All right, so here's my full track build for this R32 Skyline. We've got the 4.4 liter V8 engine, ultimate plus engine parts, ultimate dual turbo, ultimate five by three pound NOS, track suspension, and then of course, we're gonna switch back to the elite brakes. Elite brakes, elite race tires, elite plus clutch, elite seven speed gearbox, super track differential, and then you can use repair kits or nitrous refills, and of course, nitrous duration. 
All right, so that's my track build, but let's go ahead and swap some things over to make this a drag build. And there's only a couple things you need to change. I usually change the NOS over to the 1x15, and then we'll swap the tires for drag tires, and then we can mess with some live tuning settings. But for the most part, a drag build is really almost the same as your track build. Uh, we'll go out of the garage here. We're going to test the live tuning, and then we can also test the gearboxes. So let me make sure I've got one of each gearbox. we got a four. Five, six, all right, here we go. All right, so with the drag build, you really want your downforce to be minimized. So let's go ahead and do that and see if it changes. It does, it goes down by three hundredths of a second by minimizing the downforce. Now let's make sure we've got an 8.57 with this six speed gearbox, but let's swap it over to the seven speed, which is what we used in the track uh, build. And let's see what the quarter mile looks like on that. 8.57 so that's even better with the seven speed let's swap it over to the five speed eight point six seven so the seven speeds faster than the five and then one last test let's take a look at the four speed just in case I have a feeling it won't be faster but let's see eight point eight seven so Definitely the seven speed is the fastest drag gearbox and it's also the fastest for the track setup as well So we'll just keep that so this let's go ahead and make a run real quick, but this is gonna be my final drag build And I think this is actually gonna be pretty fast um, It looks like it's pretty fast 8.57 is really a good uh, Quarter mile for this car. So let's see what we got here. Wow, that's actually not bad. It hits 230 before the cross, and uh, that's actually pretty fast. So 8.57 quarter mile puts it at around number 11 or 12 on my list. That's actually pretty good. It's along the same lines as like the Mazda MX-5, um, but it's it's definitely fast. So let's let's just finalize this build. Here is our drag build. So same 4.4 liter V8 engine ultimate plus engine parts with an ultimate dual turbo i swapped over to the 1 by 15 pound nos we've got the super track suspension you've got the elite brakes and the elite drag tires elite plus clutch and the seven speed gearbox with a track differential and of course keep in mind you want your live tuning settings steering sensitivity is totally up to you but definitely have the downforce all the way down and that's how you get that 8.57 quarter mile time. So with that, there's also the zero to 60, which is 1.67. That is a very fast zero to 60. This thing is a rocket ship off the line and uh, I definitely recommend it if you plan on drag racing your friends online, this thing does move. Now, of course, there are other cars that are faster than this in the game as far as drag cars go, but this thing is very fast and very light. So let's move on to drifting. So being that this is an all-wheel drive car, I think I'm going to go ahead and try my all-wheel drive drift setup, and then we'll make some tweaks if we need to, if it's not scoring high enough. But this is the same build that I'm using for the Evo 9 as well. So, all right, so what we want on this all-wheel drive drift setup is the showcase suspension with the elite drift tires and the sport drift differential it's important that it's the sport version it makes a difference in the build so let's go ahead and take this baby outside all right the other thing that you're going to want to know for drifting is your live tuning you want steering sensitivity all the way up and again downforce all the way down you want this thing as slidey as possible so let's uh, take this on the drift track that's right out here by the home and we will test it out let's see this actually feels pretty good it doesn't want to transition very well, but the control is nice. You can kind of keep that drift rolling. The score is not very good at all, but I do like the control you have while you're turning the corner.
Yeah, see, the score is not really there, but I do like the control that I've got. To transition, you need to let off the gas, hit the handbrake, and then bring it around. But you do have some good control. You can keep this thing spinning. See how long you can keep this drift? It looks like you're going to slow down, but you can just keep it going. I do like this. That's actually not a bad drift build. 117. See, that's doable, man. You can actually three-star every drift zone in the game with this car, I think. It takes a little bit of time to master the drifting style of this car, but this feels really good. I'm not going to make any changes. This is the full drift build. This is exactly how I want this car to feel whenever I'm drifting. So here it is. You've got the 4.4 liter V8 engine again. Of course, the ultimate dual turbo and 5x3 pound NOS, but we want the showcase suspension, the elite brakes, the elite drift tires, and the sport drift differential. Those are the keys to the build. And make sure you're live tuning this car with the max steering sensitivity and the minimum downforce. All right, let's move on to the final build, and that is the off-road. All right, we're back at the garage. Now let's turn this thing into a dirt car. To do that, I usually go with the rally suspension and the off-road tires. I'll also use the rally differential. The rest of the build is going to stay the same as the track build. Let's go ahead and take it out to Rumble and HTV2 and see what kind of times we can get. Oh my god, look how tall this car is. Look at the body roll. Oh my goodness. This looks so silly. <laughs> oh, I hope this thing is fast in the dirt. I'm ready for a new fast dirt car. Oh, the body roll is unreal. It's just too tall. It's just too tall. Look at it. And it really grips up nice. I think this has a shot at a good time. I think the all-wheel drive really helps it out. Also, on the straights, it does get over 140. Oh my goodness, that was a fast time. We're, we're looking at low 150s, I believe, or low 151s. Let's see, I think it was a 151. 151.34! That's a great time. This is going to be one of the faster dirt cars, that's for sure. I think it might even make the top 10 or possibly the top 5. We're going to have to look when we get done this with these tests. All right, let's take it over to Rumble. We'll get a Rumble time down so we can officially rank this off-road car. All right, final lap. We've got a pretty decent time going. Let's see what happens. That looks like a 315. We'll see what happens here. 315. 31499. Might as well be 315. Uh, that's not super strong. I expected it to be a little bit better than that. I didn't make any mistakes, so I know that it was a clean run, but that was a little bit disappointing considering its time on HTV2. Now, the only thing I can think of is it's better at lower acceleration points, it's better at accelerating from a lower speed, I should say. Um, and it's top end speed, it kind of takes a little bit to get there. So that could be the difference between it running a faster time on Rumble and not. All right guys, so let's take a look at the full off-road build. Of course, we've got the 4.4 V8 engine and Ultimate Plus engine parts with the Ultimate Dual Turbo and the five by three pound NOS. Now, as far as the off-road parts go, we've got the rally suspension, the off-road tires, and the rally differential. Everything else stays the same. Elite brakes, Elite Plus clutch, and Elite seven speed gearbox. All right, guys, so that's it for this R32. We've got four builds for you, and uh, we've got the fastest engine. So if you have any questions about this, don't hesitate to hit me up on Instagram. Um, I appreciate everyone who has watched and stuck through the entire video. This is a little bit of a longer format, but it's a lot more fun for me, and I think it's a little bit more entertaining for you to see the tests. So that's what we're gonna be doing going forward. If you have any feedback on that or if you don't like it, please let me know in the comments down below. 
All right. Thank you very much. Shout out to all the militia subs as always. And I will catch you on the next build video. Trigger out.